How's it going, YouTube? This is Mike, your psychedelic film commentator, back up in my TV room and uh, sitting in my squeaky chair, for which I apologize. I actually have a new chair, which is over here someplace. You can't see it. Uh, I bought it several weeks ago, and it's waiting for me to get off my dead ass and put it together, so eventually. But I apologize for the noise every time I move. All right, I'm back for uh, another movie, another in the series of a movie for each year of my life. And now we're up to the year 1965. 50 years ago, folks, where does the time go? I have no idea, but it, it has gone, for sure. All right, you know, I, I've made about seven or eight false starts for this video. Either I get screwed up and I forget what I was going to say, or I start repeating information, and the last time I tried to do this, the computer crashed for no good reason. I don't know what that was about. So I'm going to try to relax and just do this. I, I just tend to get all... <clears throat> nervous or something but okay here we go the film the film I've chosen is another horror film it's called Die Monster Die directed by a man named Daniel Haller starring the wonderful Boris Karloff and this was done as I said by American International and it was during the time when their period of uh, making low-budget very beautiful looking horror films was coming to an end it, it had begun in 1960 with the the first of the Edgar Allan Poe films directed by Roger Corman, uh, The House of Usher. And in 1965, it was also the same year that the last of the Co, uh, uh, Poe Corman films, uh, Tomb of Ligeia, was released. So that period in their, their cycle was starting to uh, wind down. Now, Daniel Haller it was a first time director. He previously had worked on some of the Poe films directed by Roger Corman as a set designer. So this film, in a way, it looks like the other Poe films, or, or the, this is not a Poe film. This is, this is based on a story by H.P. Lovecraft called The Color Out of Space, which in a sense is kind of a science fiction plot, but it has all the ambiance of those horror films made during the 60s, which for someone like me is wonderful because I love those films and I love that look and that style. So, yeah, this is a good one. It's worth seeing. And I don't want to give too much of the plot away, because if you haven't seen it, I'd like you to check it out. But Karloff plays uh, a, a scientist named Nam Whitley, who is experimenting with, um, well, a, a meteor has crashed outside of the, this English village near his mansion, right? So the meteor has destroyed all the life and vegetation where it landed. And somehow he's managed to get this into his laboratory and is using that radiation, experimenting with ways to make plants grow larger, okay, which is a good thing. But of course, there are all kinds of weird side effects. Um, it, it also makes animals become huge and deformed. And what it does to humans is a little bit creepy because it makes them uh, disfigured and also makes them uh, lose their mind. So anyway... So without giving too much of the plot away, Nick Adams, an American actor, the only American actor in the film, is a scientist who has come from the United States to visit this family because he went to school with Naomi Whitley's daughter, a beautiful young girl played by an actress named Susan Farmer, and she has invited him because they love each other. So Nick Adams gets drawn into all this weirdness and all this drama uh, going on with his family and these, these weird experiments. So it, the plot is very similar in a way to, again, some of the Poe films like um, House of Usher and The Pit and the Pendulum, where someone has come to visit this, this family not knowing their history and being drawn into all kinds of uh, strange weirdness. So yeah, the, there's a sense of deja vu here, but for me it's a good sense of deja vu. So Boris Karloff by this time was 77 years old and not in very good health. He spends most of the time in this film in a wheelchair, and he does get up and walk a few times, and he is, but you know, he's so good. He gives 110% of himself. He, he looks great. I mean, he's still the wonderful Karloff we always loved, loved to be afraid of, and he's alternately scary and then very sympathetic and always delivering his lines like, the, like he's doing Shakespeare. And Nick Adams is kind of a good contrast to uh, Karloff being this brash young American. And um, I, I like the scenes they do together. Now, there are some other actors in the film, 
notably a, a character actress named Frida Jackson, who plays Karloff's wife, but she is also very good in this film. You may remember her from a Hammer film called Brides of Dracula back in 1960, where she played the servant, I think her name was Greta, I believe, where who was the servant in the house where the vampire was living. She gave an over-the-top, you know, maniacal performance in Brides of Dracula. She's a little more subdued here, but she's very, very good. Also, there's an actor named Patrick, Patrick McGee, who would make a lot of horror films in the late 60s and early 70s. So he's kind of a well-known name as well. And uh, it's a cool film. I, it, it's based on a story by H.P. Lovecraft called The Color Out of Space. And the working title of the film was The House at the End of the World. And the title in the UK was Monster of Terror. So you, some of you may have seen it under that title. Highly recommended. Um, mainly just to see Boris Karloff, I think. But it's also beautifully shot, has great set design, as all those films did, and uh, beautiful color. And Nick Adams is a very interesting actor. He um, started out as a very, very young man in the early 1950s, um, working his way up, small parts. He had a, a, a small part in a film called Rebel Without a Cause, and all, the same year, another great film called Picnic, and even had his own TV show for a couple of years between 1959 and 1961, a Western called The Rebel, which he was very, very good. And was nominated for the Best Supporting Actor in 1963 for a film called The Twilight of Honor, which he did not win. But it was then that his promising career seemed to kind of go into a struggling mode. And he, um, by this time, this is probably why he was doing low-budget horror films. He also made a couple of films in um, Japan, uh, even lower budgets than this. And unfortunately, Nick Adams passed away in 1968 at the age of 36. A very great loss. And uh, so, and this was only a couple of years. Well, Boris Karloff had four more years to live. He would die in 1969. So this is one of his best latter-day performances, I think. And uh, I guess that's all I want to say. It's just a good film, a good horror film. If you like that style, then you will definitely like Die, Monster, Die. So thank you for watching. Comments are welcome. I will return with my squeaky chair and uh, in a few days for the year 1966. Okay, thank you.